What's up guys, something a little different today. Um, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make a base. This base is gonna be for this specific miniature that I picked up for myself actually. Um, I'm, I don't wanna paint 40K for myself purely because I paint it almost every day for commissions. So I actually saw this miniature and wanted to try it out because I've never really seen anything like this and I really like the art style. Um, for anyone interested, it's a White Knight prototype mech made by the Hasegawa Corporation, so a Japanese company. Um, I just found this sitting in a back corner in a hobby store. Um, I'm not sure if you can get these online, I haven't really looked. Um, so as you can see, you got the instructions, uh, this little, I don't know what you'd call it, an information sheet. I don't honestly know what it says, it's probably some backstory for these different Units, but as you can see, it's all in Japanese, so I can't understand it at all. Um, <laughs> you've got a nice, actually quite a nice little decal sheet. Um, I'm probably going to keep most of these aside and use them for, I don't know, anything really. I mean, I, I haven't found many transfers with, you know, some nice clean numbers like that, because most 40k transfers are all Roman numerals, which... I mean, it's cool for Marines, but I mean, it doesn't really work with guard, I find. Um, and he, you know, here's a view of all the parts for the model. It looks very detailed. I'm not sure how well it's gonna go together because I haven't done it yet. But anyway, this is all the, um, you know, all the materials you're gonna need for making the base. I just went to a hardware store and got it. It was a cheap little um, MDM, MDM, MDF plinth. Um, some wall um, spack filler and some cork tiling that I already had. Um, now, a side note for the cork tiling, for this I used six mil. Um, I would recommend using a smaller um, uh, thickness, so probably a three mil cork tiling if you can find it. I know you can get it on eBay, um, but my hardware store sells big um, piles of six mil cork so that's what i had lying around um so anyway as you can see i'm just getting a big clump of the spack filler um and using my fingers to uh you know spread it out um making sure my fingers are wet for lubrication otherwise the spack filler is not going to stick to anything except for your fingers so it's just going to move around you're not going to be able to shape it at all um don't use too much water or you'll just turn it into sludge. Um, that's what I found while doing this. Um, the first one, it was a, a little bit messy. Um, I got better with the other ones because I've never actually done this before. Um, so this was my first time as well. So just making a, you know, getting a clump, spreading out the outside so that, you know, blends into the base and then using our fingers to basically just make a little crater in the middle. So now you can see that I've made all three craters. Um, with, now I haven't let the, the spack filler dry yet. Um, not completely at least. I mean, it does dry reasonably, or at least it hardens up reasonably quickly. I mean, it's meant to, because it's meant to fill walls. It's not meant to, you know, just droop down. Um, but it'll actually take you probably a full day for it to set properly. Um, but I just did this pretty much immediately after I had, um, made these craters. So the, the spack filler is still quite malleable. Um, so I've just torn up small pieces of the cork tiling. As you can see, I'm just placing them around the edges. Um, I'm pushing them into the spack filler, but I'm trying not to encroach too much on the actual center of the crater. Um, if I am, I'm just pushing it back and kind of blending the cork back into the spack filler. Now going back at it with the spack filler again, I'm kind of just plugging up the gaps and using the spack filler to actually blend the cork um, into the bases as well. Um, as you can see, well, as you will see, I should say, um, once the next step shows up, um, I end up actually covering a lot of the base 
in spac filler as well, um, purely because I didn't want there to be much of a flat surface. Um, now this is going to be a display piece, so I wouldn't recommend doing that for a, um, a gaming miniature, but I wanted most of the base to be, uh, you know, fairly uneven and interesting to look at. Now I've made a mixture of about 50-50 just water and white or PVA glue. Um, and now I'm just using a brush to, I'm not brushing it over because I don't want to actually break any of the spack filler because I've left this for a full day to set, um, but it's brittle. So if you brush over it, you might actually just snap some of the, um, or just break apart some of the spack filler that's sticking up. So I'm just kind of dabbing it over the model, covering, covering it in sand and just, um, you know, shaking off the excess. I'll leave this to dry um, probably about 10 to 12 hours. And as you can see, 50-50 um, again, um, water to white glue, I'm just dabbing over it all again. Um, I do this with all bases. Um, so usually I'll just use straight white glue, but I've since it was um, over the spack filler, um, it was mostly because it was over the spack filler, it was an uneven surface, so it would have been nearly impossible to um, easily cover it with PVA glue without making it all smooth. So I just used, used the liquid um, form. And then went over it again to seal it all so as it didn't break apart. Now I'm using um, Vallejo Model Color German Grey. I've already sprayed the base black, but I was actually out of... Um, the rattle can black so I didn't get a full coverage but I'm completely covering the entire thing in German grey through an airbrush um, I didn't want any actual black to show through um, but I am going to be creating some pretty stark shadows so I wanted a very dark base grey um, so now I'm using I believe game color wolf grey um, and this is a good um, example of what I mean when I say zenithal highlights. As you can see in these two pictures, um, I use these as inspiration for um, for the shadows and I really wanted to emphasize that. So I'm actually spraying down at an angle and you can see, um, and I'm doing con consistently over the entire base, and you can see where it's picking up the shadows um, and I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, I don't want full coverage. I want those shadows to be extremely um, you know, obvious and stand out to the eye a lot. So as you can see, as I turn it from whatever angle you look at it, it's fairly different. Now I used Vallejo Mecha Color Off-White. Um, this might actually be hard to find because this is a fairly new range. Um, it's just my local hobby store just so happens to have the full range because um, they supply a lot of Vallejo product. I used this um, image as kind of a, well, that's where I got the inspiration for adding a little bit of an off warm white. Um, didn't want it to be completely cool. And I'm just, from the exact same angle, um, not wanting to spray over any of the shadows. Um, I'm just picking up the higher edges and just giving it a little bit more color, a little bit more contrast, just making it more interesting to the eye. Um, it's actually gonna be the last step um, other than the next one, which is painting the rim of the base. Um, I wanted to make this fairly basic as um, the model that's going to be sitting on top, I want that to actually um, be the focus of it. Um, so I'm using, I'm actually using airbrush primer um, with a brush around. Um, I wouldn't generally recommend this because the airbrush primer isn't really cheap paint. But since it's actually a wood base um i wanted a very very strong pigment and i actually ended up going over it i believe three times to get um you know coverage that i liked um i then freehanded what i'm going to title the miniature moon man as you can see um and that's it really i didn't dry brush it i didn't use any washes i just wanted the the colors and the angles of the spray to really emphasize the shapes hope this was helpful um if you like the video support me on patreon and i'll see you in the next one